What's going on guys, Philip, a trade genius. All right, this is a chart of the 2008 S&P 500, and this is the big drop that really stuck in everyone's memory as far as our last crash and last recession. So you'll notice how I've kind of plotted this out, and I wanna show you guys how that relates to our current situation where we are in our current market drop and bear market rally. So we're gonna go over that because I think we're at a really important point, and I think what happens this coming week in the stock market is gonna affect all of the asset classes, including crypto and Bitcoin in particular. So we're gonna check that out, and uh, let's dive into this video. Trade Genius. Guys, really quickly, we still have our specials running. It is our stimulus package specials. Uh, $299 gets you 12 months access to both rooms, uh, Bob's room, the ETF and stock side, and the crypto and binary side. Uh, and this is also going to include our new indicator, the blue ribbon indicator, which we just did a seminar on. Uh, really good for intraday trading. And uh, if you're at home looking for another source of income, uh, this will be an interesting one because you'll be able to get into even futures with uh, the micro contracts, which require very little capital to get started. And this uh, technique is very solid. Also, we're going to throw in the bottom sniper indicator. We know it's a tough spot for people, so more tools, the better. And we're going to throw this into here's the sniper buy on the Euro USD. As you can see, this is actually counter trend trading this. And notice, even in a counter, even in a downtrend, it's still going to find you the spots that you can counter trend trade. So it works really well in both environments, trending up and trending down. Here's the Australian dollar. Uh, again, these are 30 minute charts. You can run this on different time frames, but again, showing you uh, good spots to get long. Here's the USD JPY, the dollar yen. Again, good reactive areas to get long. And uh, zooming out here on the pound. Uh, both, you know, again, counter trend trade, you still got bounces that are viable. And then when you're with the trade, you get really, really big moves off these signals. So throwing that in as well, guys. So head over to trade like a genius or tradegenius.co, click on that 299 package. We'll throw this stuff in and we look forward to seeing you in the room. All right, let's dive into this chart. All right, so here is our current uh, comparison. We're looking at 2008, right? So if you notice what happened, we had a big down leg, down leg number one. And I'm a big believer in uh, seeing like three moves of a larger move, so or three pushes. Um, so you have uh, the first one, you get a counter relief rally, but you know pretty volatile, pretty violent. Comes down into a second push down uh, in this leg here, and then you get another relief rally. You know this one is less steep, but also longer lasting. Then we roll over for the third and final leg of the crash from this point here on this violent part of this down move and then we bottomed out eventually in 2009. The fib pool, if we pull the fib from this structure, uh, we ended up hitting the 127.2 extension. So I'm going to show you how that compares now to where we are at in the stock market. So our current crash, we've first leg down, relief rally, same like over here. All right, second leg down, relief rally. You'll notice that this relief rally was steep and short like this one. This relief rally as is less steep, but longer, just like in 2008. So the question is now, this little doji here that we have here, kind of similar to what we saw right at that top there, is that rollover? And do we go into this extended, longer lasting duration, less violent, but longer lasting duration of the last part of this bear market move, and then finally bottom out? And if we do that, and the move is similar to what we saw. Now, history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes. So if it was a similar extension, this 12, uh, 127.2 extension, we can also go look at that on our FIB, do a FIB pull on that. And that would take us down to around 2040, 2039. All right, so that's what I'm looking at. I thought I would share that with you guys. If this also does that, what we would expect is initially Bitcoin, and for that matter, gold to, to come down. But what you wanna look for after this next leg down, and I know that's, that seems counterintuitive because we're going into the halving. But what we might see is if we do this and then we do go down in the halving, which would just be against what everyone is expecting, right? You do expect to move down around halving, but usually you want to run up into halving. And then you're going to see probably a, a, a pullback through halving. And I explained that where miners might be offloading some excess that they were holding back to kind of offset the, the haircut to their income uh, from the... Um, the mining income gets cut in half in May, right, for the Bitcoin miners. 
uh, if this rolls over though and uh, we we will get our our having sell move before the having that's happened before okay different circumstances but that has happened in before and then after the having uh, in may you could see a bounce up and that what we look for there is on the weekly chart a higher low on bitcoin and gold and then you start to see them move up that should signal that the end is near for a bear market if this scenario plays out if we rhyme with what happened in 2008. i mean the fundamentally economy still shut down best case scenario i think we're looking at the end of may uh probably to really get back and going you know already we're seeing extensions from the end of april to the you know into may already on, in, in some parts of the country as far as local governments uh extending the uh lockdown most likely i mean you hope for the best but you have to prepare that you're going to see another extension into may from the federal government saying that they're going to recommend locking down further but really you know it's it's such a week-to-week -week thing with the virus statistics and we're still showing exponential growth on the virus statistics so you, you that that's going to affect the economy in a big way and so you can't discount that even though we have these relief rallies a lot of times in these bear market rallies that we see they're violent they are ferocious they go up break records as far as gains in a week in two weeks but in reality that's just the way the market reacts and it kind of just shrugs off news yes news plays a bigger part of this but the news oftentimes you could have notice how how bad the unemployment numbers were and we still shot up these moves are going to happen regardless of the week-to-week -week news but the structure of this move is almost already locked in stone it's just a matter of playing out and that's why you'll see moves that don't really make a lot of sense the bigger players know what we're up against generally speaking they know when it's going to be a good time to start getting into this market and then you're going to see more buyers than sellers finally the equilibrium changes so they knew from here the smart players in the room knew the millions of unemployment were coming this is just a matter of the market bouncing as it would typically do in a violent downturn and letting this play out so similar to what we saw back in 2008 so that's why sometimes the news doesn't make sense with the market moves they're already baked in all right so i hope that helps uh, as far as you know how this affects um, bitcoin you know bitcoin right now I, I i said going into this weekend be careful we might gap down on monday and if you look at bitcoin right now we've had a bit of a drop here going into the weekend um and normally like we've seen these drops uh happen on saturday after the market closes um weekends have seen some gap downs and uh so here we are we are right we're right down to our 20 weighted moving average now we do have some support in this area but if we lose the support here going into the weekend this low volume note at 64 or 6500 let's call it would be my next spot and this high volume node at 6220 would be another area 6220 to 6230 if it really got nuts and started really dropping hard i think 5700 would be if we had a big big move down but again you're going to be running into this trend line too um i think it would be it'd be a stretch to see if we got 5700 but that if it did get down there i would expect that to hold but i, I really don't think it's going to be that big of a move uh, if it does go down further into the weekend i think these upper levels are probably more realistic for that all right guys so that's it just brace yourself for that ideally you know can consolidate here the market doesn't head too much lower and uh, bitcoin can continue to grind up into the halving but uh, let's be realistic about what's going on how the market has been affecting bitcoin's price and be prepared for that and also be prepared that if these levels and you're a short-term trader these levels start to get violated that you know you're prepared to deal with it and uh, react as necessary so uh, we'll be monitoring this in the room be talking about the profit ribbon and how we can intra intra uh, day trade this uh, as well because it works on everything bitcoin crypto forex stocks futures a uh, really cool system so encourage you guys to check us out all right guys that's it for this video have a safe weekend uh, and i'll catch you on monday take care bye, -bye. trade genius